Okay. Good morning, everyone, and folks that are online and watching us. If you can't see this properly, Nilo is working to fix it up. So just have a couple of minutes patience, and everything should be okay. Uh, so this session will be for about uh, a couple of hours. We should finish before 12 o'clock. We will uh, assist the situation. If I'm way too boring, then we can go for a bit of break. Uh, otherwise, we'll continue all the way. Uh, those of you that are, did you all receive uh, a page about today's uh, session, what it is about? Uh, have you received the page from office? Are you not part of the system? I'm not, I'm not in it yet. Okay. Yeah, I asked for the login on the ground. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. <coughs> So the paging system probably have notified you that if you're bored and you don't know what to do uh, and you have nothing to do, so then today's session might help you. I think I would say, uh, I, I mean, uh, for those of you that have joined uh, the other sessions, for example, you we have been doing this for a week now. I would say this today is one of the important days because it will give you an idea about what is really the main source of getting business in real estate. Uh, it, today's meeting is very crucial in that way. You will learn that, uh, I think my mic is not on, sorry guys. I apologize because this will be recorded, so yeah. Okay, it was not on. Yeah, okay, so today's meeting is crucial uh, because uh, you will really, really wor uh, learn the foundation of this business. It's very important to, uh, to pay special at attention. If you have joined, and Nilo has explained to you that we have other weekly meetings and we have like a week of training which we have just finished on Friday, we will, we will go through those two eventually, but I think today is one of those important sessions because what happens is that like in any other business when we get a little bit excited and we have some clients to work with then we forget about developing this business that is the biggest mistake that most agents make the, the biggest mistake that if they have a couple of people because their cousin or some relative or some friend has started working with them they will get busy with them maybe find them houses or sell their houses but uh, in the long run, after they're done with them in a couple of months from now, they will be s wondering what to do next. So that's how this, this business, uh, unfortunately, a lot of, uh, I, would, I would say that a lot of agents have this, uh, I mean for lack of word, let's say anxiety disorder, which means sometimes they're down, sometimes they're up. They're very anxious because this is based on commission. You don't have a salary. When you have a fixed income salary, then you're not that much anxious. You're not in anxiety uh, and you're not in some stress. When you're working commission-based, anything that is commission-based, you always have this worry that who's going to pay my mortgage, who's going to pay my bills and at the end of the month. So in order to have some stability in your life, uh, you have to do what we are going to learn today. Otherwise, you will have those very happy moments, you will be feeling genius, you will think that real estate is the best thing in the world because you will receive a commission that is 10, th I mean commission check that is like 10,000, 15,000, 5,000, big numbers. And then you will, a couple of months later, because you did not work to develop your business, you will have nothing and you have spent that 5,000, half of them on friends and drinks and going out and then you're left with, with nothing. And that is so true. That is the lifestyle of a typical agent. So you would rather what you want to do is to have a more consistency in your life. It will also help, I mean, in your personal life if you follow this pattern. Uh, this is a, I, I will not go through that talk work. That is for agents that are doing farming. But let's start, what is that number one secret? Uh, uh, about uh, to have consistency and sustainable source of leads and income for your business. You don't want to be, uh, as I, I, I said, you don't want to be just working with a couple of people and get excited and get over it after a couple of months and you have nothing else to do. 
you will be home and say, okay, what else I have to do? Where else should I get the clients from? Okay? So the main source of this business is prospecting. If you are involved in sales, you have to do prospecting. And we will, we will go in a very detail for two hours. What is prospecting? How to do it and where to start? And what should be our expectations at the end of the day? If you want to be successful, if you want to have consistency in your life and in yourselves, you have to do prospecting. This is your job. It is, it is, there is, I mean, I don't know if you have heard that there are, uh, there is money on trees and the, the leaves are going to turn into trees. That's not the business this is. This is different. You have to do prospecting. There is some hard work involved. If you don't do prospecting, I mean, as I said, you might get lucky and your cousin and your friend or somebody from your password might list with you, which is great. When you start, that's what you need. The relationships that you have built so far, you should take full advantage of them when you start this business. But once you're done with that stage, you have to do prospecting. Otherwise, there is no more source of leads, okay? So what is prospecting? We will, we will discuss, but prospecting is the one and only way to success in real estate. This is the only way. There is no other way. So prospecting drives sales and obviously sales drive income. When you have more sales, you will have more income. This is the part that you guys have to be careful. You might receive emails and uh, agents do receive mail and uh, people approach them stating that we will give you some software, we will give you some idea that you don't need to do prospecting. You can sleep in the basement and people will call you and, and list with you. <laughs> Trust me, that is not the case. I have been in this business for more than 10 years, that's not the case. You, there is some hard work involved. You have to do things that you don't like, such as calling people. I mean, that is reality of life in this business. If somebody told you that you can enjoy your movie all the time, and relaxing at home and people will be after you to come and buy and sell their home that's not the case and there will be people that are selling you things that is not real but just want to charge you they will invite you to sell seminar on, or that seminar or this seminar just trying to sell you things to say come and join and I will show you a way that you will uh, you will make a lot of money if there is no prospecting for sure it is something not real it is not true it, it, you're in this business there is prospecting. So as I said, I mean, and there is quite a lot of agents because you know why we joined this industry, most of us or some of us, that you know so and so, or that friend of mine or that cousin of mine. Good morning, Linda. They have made a lot of money in this business, so let me be also go and join this industry and tomorrow I will be millionaire, you know? Uh, I mean, that's why they are scared of prospecting and they want to hide behind their computers. I mean, computer and Facebook and LinkedIn and all those social media, they're all tools. At the day, end of the day, they are tools, they are means to take you to your goal. But those tools are not really going to bring you real business. If you have a lot of friends on your Facebook, but if you cannot meet face to face, then it doesn't mean much, okay? I mean, no matter what people tell you that, okay, get onto Facebook, I'm not saying you should not be on Facebook. What I'm saying is that you should be with some goal and with some purpose on, uh, with, on Facebook. Facebook is simply a tool to get you to the goal. It is not the, the goal. Getting on Facebook is not the goal. Okay. So basically these guys that are giving you, I mean, some seminars or software, you're chasing false promises. So let's see what is prospecting. Prospecting, let's pay attention to each word. Is that a little bit blurry, right? Let's see if I can make it a little bit clearer. Is it better now? Okay. Okay, so what is prospecting? Prospecting is seeking. We will, we will go into each, this is the definition, and we will go into each word and what does it mean. There is meaning behind those words. Seeking a potential customer or seeking with a vision of success. So there are two things. You have to seek, which means you have to go out. It is not that you're in your basement and people will call you because they love you. You have to seek, you have to go after them. And you're seeking with a vision of success, which means you're not going e after everybody. If you know that this guy have already bought a house yesterday, going after them doesn't mean anything. 
Like they will not buy again today. It's not the shoes that you can sell them 10 a month. I mean, it's not, I mean, 10 a month for a lady. Guys will buy maybe in 10 years one shoes. Okay, so, so that's the meaning. You're not going to wait or hope. So things like, for example, sending flyers is not prospecting. Advertising in magazine is not prospecting because you're waiting at home and waiting for other people to call you. Prospecting is taking action, which means you have to go out and you're going to find people. So that's the, the, the first crucial word is seeking and the second one is with the vision to have success. So you have to have some hope of positive results and you have to have a positive mind. If you think that, you know, because my broker told me to do door knocking, I'm going to do it, but I know it will not work. If you go with that mindset, it will not work. I can tell you right now. You have to have something in you, that mindset, and you have to believe in it. Not because I say, but the, the belief has to come from you. Okay? So, let's go through the list of things that is prospecting. So, if you have worked with your past clients, and you have bought or sold houses with them, then you will call them and follow up and keep in touch with them. This is prospecting. This is something that you may not necessarily like, but I mean, everyone has to work, right? I mean, money is not free. You have to put some work. The other thing is, especially most of you are relatively new with some exceptions. Uh, Lenda is for what, 25 years in this business? It doesn't mean that you're old. It means you started when you were a teenager. <laughs> okay, so calling your sphere of influence. This is the first place that you should call for new agents. Because you have friends, you have co-workers, you have invested in those relationships. You have spent time going out with them, have coffees, have dinners, work with them, have patience because they were really aggressive or arrogant or they were not nice friends. You have, you have put with them with those relationships, take full advantage of those uh, uh, relationships. I'm going to tell you this word, which may not sound good. You have to be shameless. Really, if you, I mean, because when you start, if you're a very really shy person and you don't want to approach them, then you're not a good salesperson. You have to be shameless, and for lack of word, excuse me, I'm using that word, be shameless and go out and approach them. I mean, you're a salesperson and you have, you have invested in those relationships, whether it's family or cousin or friend or past coworker, Think about all the people that you know, or your doctor, or your barber, or the person that you have spent so much money doing your nails every week. Anyone that you know, approach them and try to uh, try to get their business. Okay? This is this is the best. This is the best and easiest way for you, if, especially if you're new. Now, for most of the these expired listing was valid in the past. Now, because of some privacy laws, we cannot call expired listings. These are expired listings, for those of you that don't know what it is, it means the, the property came in market, did not sell, and then you can call. Before, one of the main sources, probably Linda can tell you, one of the main sources for agents was uh, expired listings, but now, unless and until they gave you a permission, which the permission comes on MLS system, that it said, can I contact you after expired? Most of the people will say no. But you can only contact people that are saying yes. People that are selling by sell for sale by owners. If you're cold calling, uh, I'm not going to go into detail of all this. For cold calling, for example, each one of this needs its own system. And some of the ones that I think is uh, effective, we will discuss in coming weeks. So if you attend the weekly meetings, you will learn about them. Uh, but. Uh, Cold calling, for example, you need these days, again, because of do not call this. Uh, it is from the federal government. I, I'm sure you guys are aware that, that you need uh, to get the list and you have to buy the list. It is about 600 or 650 or something like that for every three months. You pay for the list and people that have registered not to call them, you're not supposed to call them. If you call without that list, you will get in trouble. So. It was a lot easier, the business was a little bit easier in the past. These things have made it a little bit tough, but of course there are other effective ways to do it. Door knocking is my favorite, and I mean, having open house, 
calling absentee owners. What does that mean? If you go to the city, I mean, it depends how motivated you are and how serious you're going to take this business. I have been repeating this in the last session. So if you're not going to take this serious, you will be in limbo condition for the rest of your life. You will be between full-time job and part-time job, which is uh, real estate. If you take it seriously, if you take it like as a full-time job, then you will do all these creative ideas. When I started, I was uh, the rookie of the year in my office, which was 185 pages, because I tried everything. I made all the mistakes. Unfortunately, uh, there was no one to help me. I Even my broker was not there to answer my specific questions that I had. Uh, I, I mean, you guys are lucky in this office we provide training. I, I know when I started, I had a specific questions and my, uh, my broker will run away from me and avoid me. Uh, so uh, that was the situation, but I tried everything. All of these things may not work for you, but at the end of the day, you will settle with one or two or three that's very effective and may work in your circumstances. So these are the list of prospecting, but just to clarify, this is another list that some agents or most agents think it is prospecting, but it is not. For example, buying magnets or calendars and giving it to clients is not prospecting. Having a nice website or Facebook site or whatever site is not prospecting. Basically, again, you're waiting in your basement, creating all these creative softwares and whatnot for people to call you. It's not prospecting. Uh, joining some organizations or wearing your name badge or having a magnetic sign on your, on your car or sponsoring a football team or doing floor time, for example, sitting outside, or sitting e sending emails, or answering emails, or giving out your business card, because these are all passive. In prospecting, you have to be active. You are uh, proactive. You are taking action. In this case, you are just a reaction. When somebody calls you, and that's why uh, a lot of people do this. I mean, some of, some of these options might work, for example, uh, a person with $100,000 will advertise constantly on a magazine front page his face and some people might recognize and call eventually. I'm not saying that it's not going to work, but that's not prospecting. Okay, if you, if you want to have a sustainable lifestyle and a consistent lifestyle and consistent source of leads, you have to do prospecting. Okay? So the main purpose of prospecting is to develop prospective clients for your business. And the prospecting involves two steps, very simple. And I will tell you those two steps. First of all, you have to identify and create leads. So this means you have to find who is your target. Um, we will discuss about targets. It could be anybody, but one of the targets that I like is farming, which means you you focus on a specific neighborhood and become a brand in that neighborhood. Um, I don't know where you guys live, but let's say in Markham, there is a, a specific guy that is a, uh, that's a brand. He, everybody or most people in a neighborhood knows him as an agent. But if you go to Mississauga, nobody knows that guy because that guy is a local brand. Everything is this, is about this business is about local. So you can be local geographically, which is a, in a neighborhood, or you could become a, a, a local <coughs> specialist in your community. For example, community of XYZ culture background, or XYZ religion, or XYZ sports, or XYZ whatever you have passion, right? So you could be a brand in your ch church, or you could be a brand in your community center, or you can be a brand for a specific language. But you have to be a brand. That is the best way that you can have a consistency and getting leads and we will discuss about it. So you have to identify and then the most important thing is that you have to meet face to face. That's why like going and spending a lot of time on websites and Facebook, if it doesn't bring you face to face, it doesn't mean much. You could have 5,000 friends. I don't know, that was the limit for Facebook a few years ago or last year or even recently. I don't know if the limit is still there. But let's say if you're up to the capacity of Facebook and you have 5,000 people as your friend, if you cannot meet them face to face, 
If there is no opportunity to meet them face to face, there is no value in those friendships. As a business, I mean personal is different, there might be a lot of value. Okay? So that's why prospecting means first you have to identify who you are going to target and secondly, somehow you have to secure face to face appointments. Okay, that's how you will, because people will not sell their half a million dollar home online. Even today, uh, I'm a little bit involved in technology, I will never buy shoes or clothes online. I mean, who will feel comfortable selling their house online? Right? I mean, I would rather go and touch the shoes and feel it and smell it, even though it doesn't smell so good sometimes. But still, I would rather do that than go and buy something online. And, and I mean, I don't think anybody will in their right mind sell their home just through online. So face to face is important. We have been through this. So these are some of the effective ways of uh, meeting uh, or targeting. I'm just repeating because this list is more uh, a more favorite of mine. This is, these are the ones that work more. My focus uh, in these sessions are mainly farming which is closely related to door knocking when you are a new agent I'm repeating this is your best source because door knocking will take time you're, it's like you are trying to go out with the strangers you have to go so many times to the same restaurant and hoping that the same girl will come for dinner on those nights that you're going to go and you have to see her so many times in the eye and she has to see you then she will feel comfortable and sit on the same table with you as opposed to you call your friend from school and say, you know what, I'm bored, I'm feeling a little bit depressed, can you go out with me? They say, yeah, why not, you're my friend, right? So same thing applies here. I mean, when you're calling on your friend or people, they know you because they trust you, the, the chance of giving their, giving their business to you is much higher than a stranger. But in the long run, you, I mean, you cannot rely everything on that sphere of influence. You have to build this business. In the long run, farming, which means targeting a geographical location, is the best way because you will brand yourself. Okay. So, uh, because farming, out of that list that I, I have gone here, out of this list, because farming, which is number three, closely related to door knocking, is my favorite. So, I'm going to spend few more slides uh, or discuss or elaborate more on farming because that is my focus that's what I like that's I think what uh, will make this work okay so for those of you that are farming we uh, if you attend a five-day seminar that we have uh, we discuss a lot about farming and you will learn what to do, where to start, and what type of pro area to select. So I'm not going to go through that because it will be repeat, maybe not for you guys, but people that are watching online, some of them are already experienced agents and they have gone through the uh, initial training of farming. Today we are going to discuss things that might uh, be stressful or questions or issues raised with farming. So these are the three stages of farming. When you do farming, as I said, it's a long-term business. Don't expect that, uh, that you will get results right away. There are three stages of farming. It is getting to know you. So don't expect, I mean, it might happen once in a while, but don't expect somebody that you meet at a nightclub that they will go to your condo unit. Uh, they might go, let's say, go, let's go to a coffee for coffee, having a coffee first and then maybe getting to know you then I will feel comfortable going out with you, right? So in this relationship too, there is get to know you first. Then the second stage is getting to like you, okay? And then the third stage is getting to love you. And we will go through those three stages and what does it mean. So when you do farming, which means if you're targeting your community, if they don't know you from the past, but because just they know you because you're someone's son because you're not going that often to church or community center but you want to target that community so they may if they are a little bit strangers to you in the relationship you have to go through these three phases so first they have to get to know you then they have to like you then they will give you business and once you're at that stage you pass this stage then you have established a business and to reach here it will take two years 
and I will go through how you get business. Uh, each stage takes about six months. So in all in all, 18 months, which is about a year and a half, but worst scenario, two years. So this is like you, uh, you guys know that you're independent contractor. We are just here to help you and guide you. If today that you have decided to be an agent, it means you have opened a new business. Like for any other business, for the first couple of years, you have to work hard. Once you work hard, then the rewards will start coming. But of course, you cannot wait for two years to have income. You have to have some motivation. You have to receive some check in your pocket to believe in real estate. And I'm repeating myself, but you, for that, you have to go and build those businesses on your past relationships. Your cousins, your teachers, people that you know from the past. Build on those investments, build on those relationships. That is the easiest way to, to get uh, your first deals. Okay? Even though some people may not like it. In one of the sessions, somebody uh, told me that in Oriya classes, they have told him that it's not a good idea to work with uh, close friends and family because they will bargain about commission and whatnot. I mean, unfortunately, that might be true. But I think when you're starting your business, you have to little bit let go your egos. You have no choice. I mean, if you want to do this business, sometimes you have to let go of those egos. Even if you don't, if you don't like your uncle, um, for whatever reason, then you will say, you know what, uncle, you're thinking of selling your house, why don't you do it with me? If you want to do business, you have to be, you have to be a little bit more softer and smoother with people. So, uh, even if you don't like and that's not an ideal situation for you to work with your families, when you start for experience, for getting the money, for getting the support, you need your past, past, I mean, past relationships whatever it might be. Okay, so keep that in mind. What we are discussing here will take some time. So <clears throat> keep these in mind or write down or, and those of you that are online and especially those of you, I know that a lot of you that are online, you're farming. So please pay attention to this because a couple of you guys that are online and are not in this room, you came to me and you said, oh, you're, you're focusing so much on farming and it doesn't work. We did not get results because for some of you that are in this room and you're not aware, we started a focus group from the beginning of this month and uh, basically it was from January 21st because this, our meetings are every Saturday, but this is specific meeting that we are having today, it's a special group, it is the third Saturday of every month. So we started 21st of January and from 21st till today they have done farming a couple of people. Uh, that I will not name here and they did not get results. So they came to me and said, oh, how confident do you feel about the system? So for those of you that are watching, let me tell you, and that's why I have prepared this slide for you guys, and of course, you guys can also keep this in mind. If you, At least you should get two listings in your first stage, which is getting to like me. So that is that will take within six months. Don't expect it to happen next month. Like as I said, you're building your brand and, and most of you that are watching online and some of you that are here, you guys know that we have been through the basics of selecting a good neighborhood. Any, good, any area is not good for, uh, for uh, farming, right? If there are some certain conditions and criteria that we have discussed and if you, if you have not attended those sessions, I will highly encourage you to attend. It is for one whole week. Anyways, so you will get two listings in your first stage, which is the first uh, six months. You might get more, you might get less, but this is more of an average for those people that have done door knocking. This is what they will get in the first six months, so two houses. Then there will be four, so there is two, and then another four for the next six months. So within one whole year, you will get six listings from those farming. Now, you might get more, you might get 12, or you might get three, I don't know, but this is average. If you do it right, if you do it what we will teach you, this is the average that you'll get. And you'll get eight during your uh, uh, last uh, stage, which is getting to love me. So keep that in mind. Everything is not going to happen. You have to invest time. You have to go door knocking. You have to work hard. You have to lose a little bit of weight by knocking those three to four, five hundred doors. Uh, so it will not happen overnight. This is about building your brand. They have to see your face every time you knock at that door, so it will take some time, okay? 
That's why, and for those of you that came with that face, the face that you see here, I don't know if you can see it clearly, you were disappointed and you were not hopeful, you thought that, you know, you will get the goal the next day, that's not the case. You have to have some patience and you have to build your brand and we all know for building your brand, it will take some time. Okay, so you have to have patience when you're doing door knocking. And I, I, I love door knocking. So when you open the door, sorry, when you knock the door and someone opens, this is how they will look at you. I mean, who are you? Why, why are you uh, knocking on my door? If you are a person that is totally shy or you don't want to face people or you want to hide yourself behind Facebook with uh, some name that is not your real name and send all kinds of messages, <laughs> if that is your personality, then this is not for you. If you have to have some uh, some confidence, some confidence we need to knock on these doors. And trust me, let me tell you about confidence. Nobody will beat you, nobody will shoot you, nobody will say anything bad. And 99.9% .9 of people, if they look like that at you, they are not bad people. Trust me, they are not bad people because six months down the road, you will go and list the same property and you will find, but you will find out that that guy was such a nice guy. It is just that even they are not salesperson and they they don't have good communication skills. They are not. They just want to avoid that situation. I mean, you have knocked at their door and they just want to avoid you, and that's why they have to act up. It doesn't mean that internally they are bad people. Trust me and believe me on that because I have been through that and I know it. So in that stage. You're just going to introduce yourself, pay attention, that you're a real estate expert who specializes in that area. That's very important. That is your brand. That means you know everything about this area. If you sell their house because you specialize in this area, not in Mississauga, not in Scarborough, not even in the whole Markham area, you're specializing in that neighborhood, maybe up to 500 homes, a specific location. Do you guys understand? So you're a brand in that area. So when you keep on door knocking and giving out, you're, we'll tell you what to give out. Uh, so when you do that on consistently on monthly basis, eventually this face will change. They will recognize you. But this is, when they open for the first time, this is how it is. And by the way, there might be people that even 10 times they will have that face. But in real estate, we don't need 500 people to say yes. We just need one person. Remember that. This is not, we are not selling dollar right and this is not dollar a store. You are selling a house This is on average half a million and that commission is between 10 to 15 thousand. So you just need one person out of 500 people. You don't need even 100, you don't need even 10 people, right? So that's the first stage. The second stage is getting to like you. So if someone is thinking of selling in that neighborhood that you have farmed, for the past few months. Uh, now they are thinking of selling. Now they know that their cousin is a real estate agent. They also know that they have, the person that they bought this house from five years ago is also their friend they bought this house from. But then you also become as a third person in that equation. So you might not be uh, the best choice or the only choice, but you will become one of the options. Because you have consistently knocked so many times, that in their mind they will also remember you. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. So that the second stage, the getting to like you stage, is a stage that you become an option when they are thinking of selling their home. You guys are following me? So that's why you have to have patience. So this is the stage that you will get more business because this is then you become one of the options to call you. So they might call their cousin, they might call the agent that they bought the house from, but they will also consider you. Now once you would go through that stage, second stage, once your sign is up in one of the houses, then you have a lot of opportunity to explore uh, that uh, listing because then you will uh, go out and do your just listed, just sold. You will have more opportunities to invite people to the neighborhood. People will see your, the, your sign, they will say, you know what, I know that guy, he's been dropping uh, flyers every month at my door. That's the guy, right? So people will start recognizing. Remember, in a neighborhood like anything else, nobody wants to be the first person to put their house with you. 
But once a couple of people that starts putting, they say, oh, Joe Blow for this, Joe Smith for this, so they must be, this guy must be doing a good job. They did it, then let us do it. You know, people always follow other people, trust me. I mean, uh, that's how we are. Most of our decisions are not based on logical, that we are good or bad. It is just that that guy, that girl, that neighbor, that family did it, so it must be a good thing, let me also do it. That's how human beings are. Everything is based on emotions. We are full of emotions. And so, so that's why when you get to that stage that a couple of people list with you, then, uh, then you, be, you will become the agent of that location. But it will take some time. It will take a couple of years to establish that brand. And once you're there, so again, if this is a business, it's been time mainly, this is time needed spend patience and spend some little bit of money, not a lot of money, not advertising in the front page. If you do a little bit of hard work, after a couple of years you will have more comfortable life because you will receive a lot of referrals. Now this idea is for door knocking. You can implement the same idea if you are targeting a community. You have to have some, some farming. By the way, farming is, you know, it's not agricultural farming, right? You guys understand by now, right? This is like targeting either, like farming could be geographical, which means you're targeting an area. It could be people's farming, which means you're farming your community. You have to go through those three stages. In the first stage, if it is not door knocking, you will start talking with people. Let's say if you are going to church in the past, or any place of worship for that matter. In the past, you would just go speak to God and come back out, right? Now you will go talk to God, but also talk to priests, talk to the uh, other people involved in the community. It's, I mean, just don't go straight in and straight out. And uh, for that matter, even a community center, or if you're playing soccer or playing basketball or whatever, you will start building relationships. Instead of door knocking, this is another mean of building relationships, right? So, I mean, you will not get your card in the first uh, point of contact because then you will sound pushy and like a salesperson, but building friendships and building relationships, then you will be farming. If, if you're in a, any kind of those social circles, I and mean, when I say social, please understand I don't mean Facebook. I mean real life, real people on the ground, reading, not pictures, they have their real faces. So you start talking with them, communicating with them, this is your farming. You're targeting a group of people. Now, you will become a brand in that group. This is so easy. One of my agents, I don't know if Hassan is online? Yeah. Okay, so if he's hearing me, he has, uh, he's a, a newer agent like you guys, some of you guys. Uh, he has three clients in the past three months. Actually, it's not three months. Is it March? It's mid-March, right? It's almost, okay, from January to now, he has been uh, trying to get uh, uh, clients from his community center. So he, he has been involved in the past, but now he's trying to promote himself. He has got three listings or three transactions so far closed from those relationships. So that is the best way. You have to become a brand in your community. That community could be an area in Markham, an area in Mississauga, an area in Scarborough or it could be a group of people, whether it is a place of worship, I mean, if you're a religious person, or it could be a uh, sports, I don't know, team or something like that. It depends on what you like. I mean, you have to be part of some social group. Then, I mean, as a bonus, you can use social, uh, sorry, social media such as Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever else as a tool to promote yourself. But you have to be part of some group. Okay, you could be simply part of a group. Uh, for example, one of the groups you guys will not believe it because I was involved a little bit in Chinese community, and if I say this, you, this will be unbelievable. But I was publishing a magazine in Chinese language before real estate, so I want I wanted to be part of uh, uh, Chinese business association. Uh, it's uh, I think the location was there is another mall in front of. Uh, Pacific Mall, what's that mall? Market Village or something? Yeah. Something like that. So their office was there. So I was going, attending the meeting, trying to get uh, business. But somehow you have to be part of some group and get involved and, and become a brand. If you don't feel comfortable in a group, then do farming. Okay? So that's the best prospecting. 
Oh, okay, so relationship like anything else get needs nurturing. Like it is, uh, it's like, you know, when you're trying to get married with someone, you have to take one step at a time. You go out first, then you start to buy flowers and chocolates in Valentine's time. Remember her birthdays if you are a good person. If not, then that means you have not nurtured the relationship. So you have to start nurturing the relationship. This business is about relationship. This is a relationship business. What well, any business is a relationship business. Any business that you can think of, is about relationships, but especially real estate as a salesperson. So it needs some kind of nurturing. So many successful agents are still constant door knockers. So what happens, this is not like a, you know, feeling genius, feeling idiot, feeling genius, feeling idiot. It's not that when my cousin have a couple of house to sell or buy with me, I'm feeling genius, and then I have nothing to do. So where should I go? Where should I start? What should I do? You have to have some system. and. Farming gives you a base for a system that you're targeting, constant going. I mean, if you're, let's say, if you're going to church, then you will go for God, but also you'll go for money. But God and money has been very close in the past anyway, so it, it works. Okay, this is the thing. There is always a reason that we will not do this. We are very, we might be motivated sitting here, you, you will say, you know what, I will go out and build those relationships, but we are human beings. And we will go to the. We, we want to do things easily. I mean, oh, it's too hot today. Oh, it's raining today. Oh, I will not pick up the phone and call because I'm not feeling today. We feeling well today. Oh, maybe I'm I'm not going to call because there is a nice movie in uh, playing at the time that I'm going to call, so I will avoid it today. So every day you have a reason not to do it, right? You have to be strong. You have to have some principles. You guys will not believe it how I become the top uh, agent of the year for a rookie in my office. I was doing all these things. I was waking up in the morning. Uh, I was living with my parents. So I had my room, my computer, my books, everything, and my bed was in one room. So I was coming out of the bed, going on the computer in the same room, like teenagers start today. And then uh, having my uh, computer and the whole system for three hours constantly, I was calling in the morning. In the afternoon, I was doing door knocking. In the evening, I was following up. So the <coughs> whole day, my schedule was full. So let's say if you guys want to call me, I was like a loser. I had no life, nothing else, but I was just trying to establish my business. So I was cold calling for three hours, having my lunch, going out and doing door knocking to melt what I ate so that I'd be fit because that time I was important to attract some girls but now it is not very important so then I was going and doing my calls in the evening because that's the best time to do your follow up calls so my whole day was full there is no reason I mean of course there will be days that you have calls there are days that your dad needs you to take them to doctor or there are days that you have to be with the family I'm not saying I'm not trying to exaggerate and be unrealistic there is of course some leniency but on average, you have to be like going out and working. Whatever you're doing, you have to do prospecting. If you don't feel like farming, I mean, relationship building, as I, I'm repeating, is the best way. But if you don't like that, if you don't want to go out, you have to find some other ways to call. Uh, and we will discuss about calling too. So, okay, this is about quote of the month. If you're printing some material, I would. So you have to be a little bit creative. Basically, how door knocking works, you, should, you will not go empty hand. You have to have something in your hand to give it to them, right? For image building, if you are not home, then you will, you will leave it at the door. Uh, so this is tips of the month, and especially for those of you that are watching online and you're doing farming, and please share your what we have discussed, or you have any question or comment, or. Uh, maybe to make me feel good, you can write something online and Nilo is following up and bring, will bring your message here. But first of all, uh, this is one of the things that you should say always when somebody starts talking to you, when they open their door, you should always say thanks for talking with me. Because they don't have to. They can just shut the door. So you have to be uh, thankful to them. And th this is the other thing. I hope I have, uh, I have not uh, disturbed your life. Because when you're do door knocking, some people might be busy with whatever, so you should uh, be apologetic, right? 
I mean, in sales, it, it doesn't mean you have to be an arrogant, aggressive, having all those egos. We want to make money. This is not about your egos. You can play those games somewhere else, but not here. Okay? Uh, and this is another thing. When you do door knocking, try to knock on the door, not the ring bell. Because friends will knock on the door generally. Okay? So knocking is better than ringing the bell. If ringing the bell sounds like a salesperson or somebody wants to sell, but knocking on the door sounds like you're like a friend. These are small tips but makes a difference. And we are, when you're, uh, when they're trying to open the door, please don't be just like right in front of their face. I mean, try to be a little bit on the side and try to give them some space. This because especially if you're a man, and if you're a little bit tall person like me, then some people may feel intimidated, especially if it is a woman, they may not feel comfortable. So you have to give them some space. Uh, I was uh, a York University student, I never forget one of my, uh, I will not la name her because I still remember her name, uh, she told me that, you know, we were doing surveys, one of our projects was to go out and do some surveys door to door, this was part of the project at the university, so my professor told me that uh, you are actually not going to do this, I said why, she was, she, was a, she was a little bit conservative lady, let's put it this way. You know, a woman will not feel comfortable and all that. So anyways, I had to find a friend of mine who was a, a lady friend to go with me. Uh, so that, uh, she, she, that was part of the her suggestion or recommendation and even kind of forcing me that you should go with a lady when you're going door knocking to doing the survey. Because, you know, universities want to be a little bit careful and don't get into trouble and whatnot and complain. So it was good because I had a good time with the lady too. Okay, so this is how you will do the, uh, your calendar. So what we have designed uh, is that you will have your calendar on one side. This is, I, if Nilo can get me the actual one, if it is possible. Yeah, it's there, yeah. But this is what we have designed, so this is what you can use. On one side you will have a calendar. I have put two, these are already designed for you. I have put two pictures because in farming, if you can find a partner to work with, is the best way. Okay, uh, if, especially if it's one female and one male, it is even better because people will feel more comfortable. You will also be more confident when you have a, someone beside you, if possible. If not possible, then you can do it alone. It's all up to you. But this is my suggestion, and that's why we have designed it like this. And then on the back side of this. You will put just salt, yeah. So this is how it looks. So basically, if they are not home, you will hang this on their door. And if you print three to five hundred of this, it will cost you less than two hundred dollars. So on one side you have a calendar. On the back side you will have a, a house that is just sold. So you might say, I don't have a house. You can use any of the office listings. It will show that you are active. And there is a box here, little box you can see here. It puts the averages uh, of highs and lows and uh, how much you have sold in the neighborhood. Not you, but the market, what's going on in the market. So there is a list of a writing. As you can appreciate, people have a lot of things to read. So you want to be as much less reading as possible. This is the gist of the whole market for that neighborhood. And if you don't know how to get those numbers, we can teach you how to get it. And this is already designed for you. But every month should not be the same color. It, it's better. For example, this green goes with the spring and things like that. Okay, this is how it works. So the best uh, time. Uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, on that top corner, it says sold in 30 days or we sell it for free. So that is that an option up to you if you want to do it. So basically, what does it mean? Actually, if you read this small print here, basically it says that if I don't sell it in 30 days. I will not charge you listing commission. If you price the house right, and if you market it right, which we will discuss if you come to one of the sessions, uh, the training for new agents, you will learn that if you don't sell a listing within 30 days, then it will be very hard to sell after that. A listing should sell within a month. If, if, you, if you don't sell it within a month, there is something wrong in you or in property, or in the price. One of those three things. 
for sure. So a house should sell within 30 days. If you price it right, because the highest uh, uh, interest is during the first four weeks of listing. After four weeks, the, it, it just drops down. There is a lot of showing coming in and out. People are attending, agents are curious to see what's going, what is this listing about. After the fourth, fifth week, it goes down, it dies. So it becomes very slow. You have to, your target should be to be selling a house within 30 days. Okay, and that's like a, an attractive tool. It is an option whether you want to offer or not. Okay? That's, that's in our system. You can just, uh, just change your picture. picture. Yeah, it's already done for you. And it is designed, and this will cost how much for 500? 150. Yeah, less than 200. <laughs> so you, if you know someone at the printer that can do better, let us know too. Yes, yeah, she will give you. Yeah. She'll just have it printed here. Sorry? You just pay and then have it No, you pay directly to the printer. You deal with the printer because you might need to go and pick it up from the printing company. So it depends where you live. This printing company is a middle field. And yeah, but more or less these days, printing companies are very competitive. They will offer you more or the same price. Okay. Any questions from the people that are online? You can or comments. Please write it down. Okay. Ideally, let me say this. Uh, okay. For an agent, there is only there are only two days that are the best time to prospect. It is Saturday one to five and Sunday one to five or one to four. But most people prefer to keep Sundays for their family. So I'm assuming that Sunday is a family day, but let's say if, you, if you're a little bit aggressive in this business and want to do more then those are your golden times not only for door knocking those are the times that people are home those are the times that people are, as you can see from this space they are happy they are eating they are playing kids are there so this is the, that is the best time to prospect so if you're not doing door knocking if you're trying to call people or your friends or something, that's the best time. I've written here Friday, but that is in case if you don't want to work on uh, on, on Saturdays or weekend. But Saturdays are the one to five is the best time to approach door knocking. Other times when you go 80% or 90% of people are not home because they are working during the week. Okay? So that is the best time. Only so forget about Sunday if you're a family person, or maybe you want to. You're not a family person, but you want to relax or be with friends or watch your favorite movie. If you just do this once a week, once a week prospecting, you will have a consistent uh, source of income. I, I I mean, in six months, if you if you do what I'm telling you to do, and if you don't get business, I think we have to discuss. Maybe I didn't teach you properly or I did not say it properly, or you did not hear it properly, or you have not implemented properly. Because for sure it will work. You have to be patient with it. And a couple of hundred a month for six months, that is 1,200 or 1,000 or 1,500 is not a lot of money. I don't think that's a big investment. Okay, so uh, this is something I'm sharing what worked with for me, especially in the first year I did this, all of a sudden I was like the rookie of the year in my uh, office and I actually have to still kept the awards from that time so if I did it I think everyone can do it so it is it is just that you have to stick what worked for me and most probably it will work for you too you have to have patience and unbelief in it and it, you should know that it will take time so keep in mind that this is the best time this is your goal time those weekends timings in the afternoon not too late I mean after five o'clock people are preparing to go out so that's not a good time to go somewhere in the afternoon is the best time to prosper uh, if uh, some people might have listings that open houses done at that in itself is also prospecting but if it is done properly uh, and again some of you that are listening to me online, you might have done uh, open houses and it did not work because you did not do it properly. Next month, the third Saturday, we will discuss the whole two hours how to do effective uh, uh, open houses. Uh, because the open a good open house is a good source of leads. So in those two hours, if you don't have open houses, you have to do prospecting. Just work these three, four hours a weekend, that's it then you're a good agent, okay? 
Do we need a break or are we are good to go? We are good? You need Okay, but no longer than five minutes then. So let's come latest by 11.15, okay? Because we have a lot to cover.